Hey, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living. Um, this video is actually in response to uh, a phone call I had a little while ago where I was describing something to somebody and they didn't seem to, uh, just couldn't, I couldn't really describe it well enough. So I decided to make a quick video so in the future I can just refer people to it. Now, uh, the question that this answers is I get calls from people that are working on a horn or have had work done on a horn and uh, as far as they can tell it is leak free but it is still acting like it's leaking. Now one of the main things that can make a horn feel that way uh, which is going to be like stuffy, unreliable, dead, uh, would be that your key heights are incorrect, usually too low. But you can also have leaks uh, around tone holes. If you've got soldered tone holes, you can have cracks in the body that are leaking. Uh, you can have leaks in solder around like octave pips or around a neck tenon joint. The neck tenon joint itself can be leaking. Um, or your pads can be overly porous. I say overly porous because uh, the leather that is used on pads is animal skin and animal skin has pores in it just like ours. Um, and these pores can be of varying sizes and depth uh, and you can experience different uh, amounts of porousness and different amounts of slow leak through the pad. Um, and if pads are too porous, you'll end up with a, uh, what I think is a dead and stuffy sounding horn, what people who like porous pads call a uh, dark horn. Um, so I have a saxophone that I just overhauled and what we're going to do here is do a very quick and like sinfully cheap way to check if you've got any uh, major leaks. It is not a fine-grained method, it is not something that is going to show you where a leak is, but at least you can put your horn together and figure out whether you have a major leak that you have not yet seen. So what you're going to do is just put your saxophone together minus the mouthpiece, okay, and around the bell end take a surgical glove and it needs to be uh, latex or nitrile, a you know glove that you use for washing dishes is not going to work. Um, stretch it over the bell, stretch like the wrist opening over the bell. Okay, so see we've got that stretched over the bell there. Stuff the inner part inside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mouth on the cork end and I'm going to inhale. I'm going to apply suction to the instrument and then I'm going to seal it with my lips. And what we're doing here is we're creating low pressure uh, inside the saxophone and that is going to pull this down inside the bell and by the rate at which it slowly comes back out, assuming I'm holding good vacuum with my lips on the neck end here, um, that'll tell us how, whether we've got uh, a major leak or not. Now, as I said, pads are porous uh, so even if you've got really, really good pad seal, it will slowly, very slowly, uh, come back out. And this horn has good pad seal, so this will give you a control. So I've got the light set up so you can see down in here. I'm going to close all the keys, and I'm going to apply suction. And uh, if you hear any noises, that's not me applying further suction. Um, I've actually got my windows open and you can hear birds and my chickens scratching around outside my workshop. But you just, you apply suction, you seal it, and then you wait and see how long this takes to come out. And if it takes any longer than what you see here in the video, then you've got what I would call um, a leak somewhere. Either your pads are too porous or you've got another leak. Okay, so here it goes. Do it again. So that is good pad seal. Um, and what you're seeing with the uh, glove slowly pulling its way out, um, that is just pad porosity and you're going to get that on almost everything. If you have, uh, if you 
are lucky enough to have an exceptionally good set of pads, you may have slightly less movement than that. Um, if you've got really bad pads or another leak, you'll see faster movement than that. But I would say that is about uh, what you should use as an acceptable uh, gauge. Um, what you just saw there means a horn that does not have any appreciable leaks. Uh, and they make uh, machines called mag machines uh, where you can actually quantify how much air you're leaking. Um, but they cost like 500 bucks and I don't really see uh, for my purposes or for your purposes just checking whether you've got a leak uh, how that's much more helpful unless you're going to also isolate like each tone hole so you can kind of see where it would be coming from if you're just trying to see if there is a leak in your horn uh, that's really all you need um, and you can go to a drugstore and pick up a pair of these or a box of these and they're you know extremely cheap so you can uh, do this test on your own so, I hope that was helpful, useful, informative. My name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. And I just showed you a super cheap, um, non-precise, uh, but uh, quite easy way to see if your saxophone has uh, any major leaks.